Okay, for this exercise, we're looking at strengthening the glutes and we're going to be using a resistance band for this. You can either use a hip band or you can use a longer band like this. Um, or if you've got the type where you've got the handles connected to one single band, you can use that as well. Although I do tend to, to think that those ones are, are rarely very strong. So you may have to double up on the bands that are going through the handles because you, I don't think you would get enough resistance in those to, to really work your glutes. Your glutes are a big muscle. Um, glute maximus is the biggest muscle in your body. And therefore trying to get that to activate is quite difficult. Now, if you've got no experience with this whatsoever or you've got incredibly glute weeks, glute weeks, <laughs> weak glutes, uh, then when you go to do the kickback, if you're using a band, you might find that you just start kicking in and using your lower back. In that instance, you might be better just trying it body weight only to begin with and just doing a standard donkey kick. But what I do tend to find with that is when people start to get into the flow of that, they just start kicking their leg back. And by doing that, you start to just arch your back in order to make the kick happen and it's and extending with your your quads and the glutes still don't get activated particularly well. So using a band, I definitely advise if you possibly can. If you don't have one, I'll put a link in the description to which bands um, we suggest you, you consider. Um, we don't have any connection with uh, any of the ones on the list. It's just the fact that these are ones that are quite durable and therefore um, they're definitely worth considering. You can have a look at them. If you don't get them from there, you can go somewhere else. It doesn't matter. It's just these are the, uh, it's, it's to try and stop you getting cheap ones. So, um, uh, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to show you with the hip band first and it's probably the easier one to do because once you're in position and you start moving you can really feel it and you don't have to do anything with the rest of your body. When you're using the longer one you need to connect it somewhere so you're going to hold it with your hands. What's useful about that one though is because it's connected to your hands you can move your hands and create more or less tension depending on what you need. So you can get a bit more adjustment from this one, it's a little bit easier to do with this one. Either of them are going to be useful uh, anyway. But just remember, strengthening your glute, particularly your glute maximus, is incredibly important. It's the stabilizer coming from the back end for your midsection. And a lot of people end up just working on their core. They do planks and sit-ups and things like that, thinking that's going to strengthen everything. But you need something pulling from the other side as well to give you that connection around the lower back in order to give you the strength there that you need to avoid pain and discomfort and just to keep you stable on all movements, things like squats, deadlifts, meaning deadlifts, all these things, when your lower body is connected to your upper body. If you don't have this solid connection through the midpoint, then that's going to be the weak point in the chain and that's the bit that's going to end up getting hurt. So to protect your, your lower back, to protect your hips, this is definitely an exercise worth considering. It doesn't take long and it's not that difficult. But just remember when you're doing it to connect your brain to the muscle. Remember the muscle you're trying to work, your butt. It is not your thigh, it's not your hamstring, it's not your lower back. Keep your brain connected to the muscle that you are trying to work and try to contract and extend. When you can do that, your mind muscle connection will improve and then you should be able to do it on most exercises and it will help with all those other big exercises I mentioned earlier. I'll show you what I mean. see with that one, particularly in the second one, I was making tiny little adjustments to try and make sure I had that connection into my glute. That's something you should be doing consciously all the time, remembering the muscle you're trying to engage with, re-engaging with it. Don't just kick your leg back. As with all these exercises, when it's unilateral, when you're doing one leg at a time or one side at a time, start with what you believe to be your weaker side, do your reps on that side, and make sure you don't exceed that on your stronger side. That way, if there is an imbalance, it should start to level up over time. So, 
give it a try, feel the burn. If you're not, come back to me, let me know how you're getting on, and if we need to tweak some things, we can look at other options. Give it a go, see how you go on. Speak to you next time.